Guest tonight is an accomplished author, public speaker, and political activist. He's worked tirelessly in the fight for voter rights and has been an outspoken critic on violence against women. Please welcome Kevin Powell, everybody. Kevin Powell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually covered the 2004 Republican National Convention next to Madison Square Garden, and I was one of the five Negroes in there, so <laughs> that, 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 that counter is accurate. <laughs> still, four years later, still, all right, eight, years, eight later. years later, still accurate. That's, that's a damn shame. Yeah. <laughs> but not a surprise. No, yeah. no, no. They, they, they can do better, and they're not doing better. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you talk about that stuff a lot, man. You've, uh, I mean, you, you've written 11 books, written or edited 11 books. Yeah. You've run for Congress twice. You've lectured all over. Here's my question. Are you the most successful person in the history of the real world? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you are, you said you're going to Charlotte next week for the uh, Democratic National Convention. I leave in two days, actually, going yeah. early, yeah. Yeah. So why didn't you go back to the Republican National Convention? <laughs> <laughs> because in 2004, I felt like I had, I had to take three showers every night after you said that. Let me say this. I love all people. I don't care what your race, your gender, your sexual orientation, your faith. And so the America that I believe in is where we're all sisters and brothers. And I cannot sit there and watch people lie about what they represent and keep saying we want to take our country back. That would say you're going to take back civil rights, you're going to take back the rights of women, you don't believe in gay marriage, you don't believe that this is a country. If you happen to be, if you're not Christian, if you're Jewish or Muslim or some other faith, then you, somehow you're, you're less American. That's just unacceptable to me. What, man? You yeah. seem totally biased. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally in love with people. That's what uh, I am. Yeah, and the real too. America, which is, look at the audience. The diversity of this audience is what it represents. How do you feel about, what do you thoughts about Obama? I support Barack Obama. You know, I mean, <laughs> let, me, let me say this. And, and I, lo I love the skit that you all show. And a lot of us actually believe that Barack is going to be this major uh, change agent. And to me, when you look at the history of our country, change has always come from the people up. up. And so, yeah, he represented hope and change and saying, yes, we can. But to expect him to be able to do all these magical things in four years, it's just it's not realistic. The civil rights movement happened. You know, President Johnson passed those laws because there were people protesting and marching and organizing, which is why I'm in organizing in the streets of Brooklyn around this country. You can't expect one person to do this stuff. Um, and there's so many things that have that have happened in, the, in these three and a half, four years, and it's unfair. As I listen to the Republicans and even some of us who are disillusioned, there's this huge uh, enthusiasm gap they're talking about with young people and the hip hop generation. I'm like, a lot of folks are not even reading basic things that have happened, you know, from, from you know, support for small businesses, you know, pay equity law that was passed uh, between women and men, which is important, ladies. I think y'all would agree with that. You know, um, and, uh, I mean, hold on a second. Some women weren't clapping. That was weird. <laughs> I don't know if I want the same money as me. That's a lot of responsibility for my lady head. <laughs> <laughs> on a real basic level, we gave Ronald Reagan eight years and we gave George W. Bush eight years. I mean, come on. You know, yeah. Barack should at least get another four years. Because the first four years is really fixing the next mess of W. Yeah. It's eight years. So I, I mean, that's ridiculous. So. So, you know, there's a lot of the stuff with voter ID happening right now, like in Philly. Yeah. And I, know they, I think they just struck the law down in Texas. So, yeah. what are your thoughts on voter ID? In the state of Ohio, they got a law now where you can't register to vote on the weekend. Well, if you're a single mother, like my mother was a single mother, she worked 40, 50, 60 hours a week. The only time she could actually register to vote was on a Saturday. Now, she, she couldn't be able to, she couldn't do that now. And that's unfair to people. It's affecting people of color. It's affecting poor people. It's affecting uh, the voter ID laws. It's affecting folks who are in the LGBT community. And this is, these are the folks that represent all of America. You know, so you're saying that only certain people can vote? That's not, that's not democracy. No, it's not democracy. No, right now. Yeah. So my, my hope is that um, all of you out there, I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, I just hope that you all believe in democracy and, and, and believe that we all, all our voices matter and, and that we should not have people disenfranchised. The world, these voter ID laws are about, they saw all those people coming out, that beautiful rainbow coalition in 2008. All of y'all who voted, they're saying, we're going to make sure some of those folks can't vote again in 2012. And the hope is that that can allow the Republicans to win this presidency. That's what it is. Let's tell the truth about it. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right, man. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for coming by, man. Yeah, we really appreciate you. it.